Hey guys, um, <clears throat> it's me again. I thought I would take this quick minute to um, talk to y'all guys. Um, I'm not going to do a long um, video today because I have a few appointments to go to, but after my last appointment, I just wanted to take the time right now um, and then speak to y'all guys. Um, you know, I had a, um, a meeting with the, um, the, um, the hospice of Savannah um, for um, caregivers and um, caregivers are, are family that's taking care of their loved ones. Um, and, you know, it was so sad and emotional, all these people there that's caregiver to their, their loved ones, you know, just don't know how to cope with, with everything that's going on, with all the, the expense, you know, not having long-term care. And that's how we come in place is to, you know, teach them ways and, you know, help them for themselves. So, you know, a lot of people sometimes don't take the measure or do stuff till they see their loved one in that situation. Um, you know, that's what it takes sometimes for us to stop making better plans and arrangement. You know, one of the lady that was there, it was so sad. She, she was, you know, speaking of, trying to um, apply for um, for Medicaid for her husband to be in a um, in a facility, but she cannot apply for Medicaid. In order for her to get Medicaid, she has to sell everything she owns in order to be qualified. And a lot of people don't know that to apply for Medicaid to help your loved one for any kind of long-term care or, or nursing home or whatever the case is, you cannot have any asset. You can't have no income pretty much you can't have no asset you can't have no 401k you cannot have any asset pretty much to um, to be eligible for medicaid so her dilemma is okay i cannot sell everything i have or get rid of everything i have to get medicaid for my husband care because i need that when I retire, I, I'm going to need all the assets and our 401k in the next 10 years. How can I give up everything I have now? And these are stuff that we we're saving for to use for our retirement. How can I give up everything right now so my husband can be taken care of? So now she's in a dilemma that she has to choose not having anything at all in the next 10 years. So she could get Medicaid to take care of her husband. And it really touches my heart that, you know, these are some of the scenario we're going to be running into if we don't stop making better plan and a better arrangement for ourselves, especially long-term care. A lot of people just don't understand how important it is to have long-term care. So, you know, I just wanted to take the time to share that because it really touched me to see all these people in there, all these caregiver. And I'm sure none of them had thought they would have been in this situation or this position right now that they're in, you know, trying to get emotional support and trying to find ways that they could do things different for themselves. And as I said, it's sad. We always have to be in a situation to wake up. But, you know, I know this, a lot of us need to start planning. You know, um, I, I gave they gave me one of the lists that they have there um, after the meeting, and it's a list for, for for you to put down things that matters to you. You know, um, in the case something should happen to you. You know, I tell my friends and family they already know if if something should happen to them, I am not the one to put down as on their um their advance directive to make any medical decision for anyone. I am not able to. I am not able to make a decision to, to take your life support. I am not able to make a decision to pull the plug. I am not able to make any medical decision for any of my loved ones. I just don't have the heart. I won't stop it if that's what they want, but I will not be able to make that decision. And any one of my family that's close to me or know me know that. I tell my daughter. If she has any kind of medical decision, a life situation where a decision needs to be made, I am not the one to designate to do it. I will not be able to. And she knows that. She needs to figure out who's going to do it. It's not in me. You know, so you have to know now, you know, how do you want enough your life to be? Do you want to be hooked up to a, a machine for the rest of your life? Is this something that we're, 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 we're documenting or talk to our loved ones about? 
you know, these are some of the questions that was on the sheet they, they gave us, you know, it's important for you to make a list of the three most important things to you and share it with your loved ones for your end of your life care. You know, you have to think about who you want to make your medical care decision or to speak on your behalf if you're unable to speak for yourself. These are stuff that we have to start getting down. We're so busy living, 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 living. You don't know when your day is going to come. You know, make a list of questions that you want to ask your loved ones. Or, you know, no, don't just choose one of your loved ones to make decision for you without knowing if they're able to make that decision for you. You have to talk to them. You have to find out if it comes down to it where you're on life support and you, you don't want to be on life support. Are they willing to make that decision to let you go? You have to know your kids. You have to know who is who is too emotional to make a decision like that for you. Because you're going to choose the wrong child or the wrong person and they're not going to be able to make that decision for you. That's something you need to find out from your loved ones. You know... You have to make sure you have your fill out your advanced directive form and make sure you appoint someone. It don't have to be a family member. It could be someone that you trust. You could have a, um, appointed an agent who will be able to speak on your behalf and make final decision for you. But you have to have it in writing. You have to make copy of your advanced direct and give it to your agent, give it to your doctor, give it to someone else or anyone else that is aware of your wishes. Your wishes by word of mouth is not going to happen. If you already have an advanced direct, you know, review it. Make sure the information on it is still correct. You have to evaluate the information you have on there. You know, things that you could do today, don't put it off for tomorrow. You have to make decisions. You have to plan for your life today as there is going to be no tomorrow. You know, the, the thing is that the, we're, the more we are aware of our mortality, the more things become important to us. When we are not aware of our medical um, strength, history, our mortality, the less things are important to us. And that's something we need to stop. We need to think that tomorrow is not promising to anyone. So that's why we have to make plans today in the anticipation you're not here tomorrow. Or not that you're not here. That tomorrow you're unable to make any kind of decision for yourself. Take care of yourself. You know, people who have kids. You know, who, who do you think will... Do a good job taking care of your kids if you should go on. Not because you have family member. It doesn't mean that that's who you want to have your kids. It doesn't mean that you want your mom to take your kids or your sister. You have to be able to know and make a decision who you want to take care of your kids if you do have kids and you pass. We have to get all these stuff together. You know, if, if you should go to, if you go to the doctor right now and the doctor tell you that, hey, you have one year to live, would your priority change? What is not important to you now would become important. But why should you have to be rendered your mortality chart or the time you have left to live for you to make decision? But if a doctor did tell you that, you know what? I bet you will be start making decisions. And why would you start making all your important decisions and start getting everything to order? Because you have no control over your time anymore. There's one thing you cannot change. It's time. But we shouldn't be at the point where we're, we're render a medical illness or render a certain situation for us to start getting things together and figure what's, what's our priority right now and what we need to get organized. Why can't we just do it? We know we're going to die one day. We know we have no control if we are alive tomorrow. We know we can step out of our house and get in the car and meet into a car accident and die. 
How much people you ever see today and then you get a phone call like, oh, you know, someone passed away. You have to know how to get um, long-term care policy that's going to cover chronic illness, you know, terminal illness, critical illness. Anyone is subjected to any kind of medical condition at any given minute. And these are stuff we need to start taking care of. And as I said before, don't think you have loved ones. And it's sad seeing all these caregivers there today. Some of them in tears. Because the burden become on them and they don't know what to do. They're looking for support group for some people to talk to to get the stress off them because they are there taking care of their loved one and financially it's hard and it's difficult because they never made any plan, any preparation for any of these situations. They assume Medicare and Medicaid would have just take care of everything. But now they have having a rude awakening. Things you could do today are change today. Do it and change it today. Don't put it off for another day because another day is not promising to no one. Don't have to be aware of your mortality to make things a priority for you. Whatever happened, happens. Whatever happened two minutes ago, you can't undo. So take care of yourself, take care of your family, take care of your kids, take care of your loved one. Stop putting things into place. Start talking to your families. Start letting your, your wish, you know, be documented. If you don't want to be resuscitated, you know, get a DNR. You know, let's start getting things in place for us. You'll be shocked and surprised that you're thinking one person could do something and they can't. How do you want to live the rest of your life? If something should happen to you, how do you want it to be carried out? Sometimes people have to be in a hard situation and a hard place to make a life altering decision. When we have the ability to make that decision before we end up in a situation. And I'm sure all these family and all these people that we I went and, and had the meeting with today and saw never thought they would have been in this situation. We never think we're going to be in a situation until we're there. Mm -hmm. But no one has control over our time but us. And whenever your time is here, your time is here. You can't go back and fix it when your time comes. So I am asking, and I'm hoping that people out there start taking a, a, a deeper look, a more loving, caring, unselfish look at their life, their self, where they are in life. A lot of people know a lot of these things that needs to be in place, but they just refuse to do it. Maybe y'all don't have the resource. Maybe you don't know where to go. Maybe it becomes so overwhelming, you don't want to think about it and hoping it will work its, itself out. It won't. It won't. But what you need to keep in mind, no matter how you look at it and how you deny it, and how you don't want to think about it. It is going to happen regardless. But don't leave all that burden and that situation on your loved one to make all that decision for, your, for you. Make it for yourself. We will be doing live webinar on Wednesdays. Every Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We'll be having a Zoom nationwide for anyone that want to be able to zoom in 
learn financial concept, learn about long-term care, learn about your asset, learn about things you, you, you know, you can't have if you want Medicaid. And, you know, even if some people think, you know, I'm at the point now where I need Medicaid, I'm going to sell everything so I could get it. There's a look back period. And if you sell all you have or get rid of all your asset within that look back period, you're still not going to be eligible. You know, do, a lot of people don't even know that there's a look back period when you're applying for Medicaid. These are some of the stuff that we need to know. We need to fully understand our retirement, our long-term care, our future, what is available to us, what we can do, what we can't do, what we could apply for, how much, how long does you know Medicare start, how long it will cover you for. These are all the stuff that we need to know, especially now if we're dependent on the government and the government funds. And everyone else to take care of us instead of us planning for our stuff. We need to make sure we take the time to understand how all these benefits works. And don't assume because you're unable to work or you're disabled or, or everything else, you automatically get these stuff. And all these stuff vary from state to state. They vary from state to state. There's a lot of long-term care options and long-term plans out there that is not expensive. There's hybrid policies out there that could give you coverage for long-term care, disability income, death benefit, um, if you're unable to work, you know, to pay your mortgage. There's so many different stuff out there that you can take advantage of. But you need to understand and know the resource, know how to get them, know how, where to find them. If you don't get yourself knowledgeable and know how to apply the knowledge, you know what they says. What is more important than knowledge? Apply the knowledge. If you have the knowledge and you don't apply it to anything in your life, you still have nothing. You know, share these video, pass on the video. Anyone that shared this video, you know, let people, tell people to inbox you. Inbox you the information. Forward the information over to me. Let's turn this in a national campaign to educate family and planning for their retirement and their future. I'm committed to reach out to people for the, the entire month that is my commitment and I, I wish people out there will commit to something devote to something other from yourself if you feel you don't need any help i'm sure you may have some friend that needs some information or who you know is in a different mindset than you are who want to plan for their family who want to plan for their future you may not care but you may have a friend that care you know don't ever take away knowledge and education from anyone because you don't want it share the information share this video Talk to people. Find out from people who's looking for college planning for their kids, who's looking for long-term care for themselves, who's looking for disability income replacement for themselves. Pass the information on. You know, let them give you their information. Pass it on to, to us. We're not here just trying to, 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 to just help someone here in Georgia. We want to help someone anywhere they are that looking for help or looking to better plan for their future and their retirement we are here to offer that help to them inbox me if you need my number inbox me if you want to know where to go inbox me if you want to get more information and you're unable to log on to zoom or call in inbox me but when you post this video you want to put on there for them to inbox you if you need my email address, you know, inbox me. I want to thank everyone that's watching this video. I want to thank everyone that shared this video. I want to also thank all my subscribers, my follower on YouTube. Um, you know, we could do something great. We could do something big. We could change and impact a lot of people's life. And you know what? I know you cannot change people who don't want to change. And they say it's two things you're never going to be able to overcome. And a lot of you people are watching this. It's going directly towards you, too. It's two things you will never be able to overcome. Ignorance and poverty. Those are the two things you will never be able to change and, and overcome. But for the people who want to make a change in their life and their future, you can never say or can't say you were never aware 
or you were never given the tool, or you were never given the resource, or you were never given the information to make a change and a difference in your life and your family life. This is my time. I hope this video um, that I'm recording, you know, I hope someone hear it and decide to make a change to their life, a change to their situation, start thinking and making a different plan for their future, their family future, and their kids' future. No one knows when your time is cometh. This is my time. Have a good day. God bless.